Hi, in this lesson, we're going to learn how to play a double stroke roll. So the double stroke roll, i found, is one of the hardest things for students to get right. I've just noticed so many of them played incorrectly. So I want to break it down for you and hopefully sort of dissolve the mystery of the double stroke roll. Now, I want you to start by playing nice, relaxed full strokes. Now, if you're unaware of what a full stroke is, if you're unaware of how to hold the sticks properly, make sure you go back and check out my previous videos because I break all this down in more detail. Um, the focus of this lesson is the double stroke roll, so if you're unaware with the full stroke, how to hold the stick, fulcrums, and all those things I've mentioned, go back and check out the previous videos. Um, I'll leave some links below and sort that out and then come back. Okay, so here's the double stroke roll, nice and slow. The stick's rebounding straight back up into the starting position. You're probably sick of me saying that by now. I say that to all my students and just about every lesson on these videos. Um, but it's vital. It's, the stick's just hitting the, hitting the surface and rebounding back up. Now, the stick's not coming all the way back up to like 90 degrees from the pad. Um, it's going to sound too loud. It's, yeah, it's, that, that's an exercise to practice separate. Um, but just sort of try and get the sticks to sort of travel about 45 degrees from the pad. So at this tempo here, it's still all wrist, okay? The, the stick's hitting the pad and I'm sort of following that rebound back up into that starting position. Once it gets a bit faster, I've sort of got to change to a different gear because my wrists can't keep up with that, that speed. So what's happening there is what's called like the push-pull or the throw-catch sort of technique. It's a common terminology you might have heard. Now, the, the concept behind that is that the, the stick hits the playing surface and it rebounds back up sort of to where it came from, back to the starting position, but my wrist has sort of stayed down. And then my fingers catch the stick and pull that stick back up to the original starting position. So you're getting sort of two sounds for that one wrist throw. Okay, so if you watch it again, the stick comes down in slow motion, it hits, the stick rebounds back up, my fingers are now open, and now I can snap them back down hit the surface again and then follow that rebound back up. So that technique there takes a bit of practice. Um, again, don't rush any of this. Do that as many times as you need to to get that to feel comfortable. Okay, so it's come from this wrist stroke to this throw catch thing. They're the two techniques you need each hand. Now, as if you're a traditional player, you're in this sort of wrist mode at that slower tempo. Again, things are nice and controlled and relaxed. It's still fulcruming through that sort of base of the thumb there. Now, when we get faster, we're going to engage this sort of first finger here. Okay, so it's going to for the throw if you like, like with this one where the stick opens up, with this one the finger, the first finger sort of pushes out, allows that stick to bounce and then you snap that finger back in for the catch. So it's sort of like it follows out and in, out and in, out and in. So it's got that da da, da da, da da feeling. It's a hard one to show on the on the camera because it's, it has to move so fast for this to feel comfortable. But that's the concept, it's out for the throw, in for the catch. So double stroke, so out, in, out, in. It's happening fast, but it's all still bouncing through here. These fingers are sort of off the stick. They sort of have to be out of the way. That, that ring finger sort of catches the stick at the end, but for that initial throw catch, this finger gets out of the way and is there for the catch, but it's not there for the throw. If it was there for the throw, it wouldn't be able to bounce. So that's a common thing I see with students is all these fingers sort of stay around the stick and there's, there's no way for the stick to rebound 
like that with these this, these fingers in the way. So make sure you get them out of the way and it's led by this first finger here. It's out and in, okay? So out, in, out, in is the, the sound really. Da -da, da -da. Now you'll notice my forearm is still rotating. It's not, it's another one I see with students is just that sort of forearm coming down. It's still that sort of full stroke technique where the, the forearm is twisting. And that, that's the concept really, that, that's how we get that next gear with the double stroke roll. So your practice will be just to get this sort of double stroke roll happening nice and even and controlled at a slower tempo, making sure the sticks come back up into that starting position. And that gives that nice controlled sound. Make sure you don't slam the stick down when you're doing this. It's not about heaviness, it's about actually the opposite. It's about feeling light and controlled in your hand. Yeah, and don't don't rush this because this is the core of it. This is the foundation of your of your your technique. So spend as long as you have to on this. It's not a race. If this takes you weeks, months, doesn't matter. Just get it right, and then as the speed comes, it'll feel like you have to change gears. At about there for me. Now I've sort of clicked into those fingers, sort of throwing and catching, along with the wrist stroke, of course, as well. Now, that's, that's the idea, because then once you've got them under your hands, then they transfer really nicely into sort of musical situations. Um, in the practice pad book, I've got a lot of sort of fill-in, double stroke roll fill-ins around some accent, accented phrases. So in the next lesson, we'll be, we'll be breaking down some, some more motions and how we can use these double stroke rolls within a musical setting using the accents around the drums or around on the pad and filling in the gaps with double stroke rolls. Okay, that's the end of the lesson on the double stroke roll. There's a lot of information there. So, like I said, be patient with it and get this down because it's one of the most important rudiments that we can learn. Okay, thanks for watching. Take care. I'll see you on the next one. Cheers.